right, for the members of the congressman staff, is he, do you um, think he'll be here momentarily or I put you on the spot? I would say maybe 10 minutes, 15 okay. minutes. All right. Um, we were trying to make it so that he could uh, not walk in cold, but uh, we recognize that he'll probably adjust. Um, so with that in the program, uh, next I would like to uh, have Sarah Mahmood come up, who's with the Department of Homeland Security, the Science and Technology Directorate. And uh, I've asked Sarah to, to talk a little bit about uh, DHS and the S&T world and the, the role that timing plays in some of the things that she's involved with. So, Sarah? very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, uh, as mentioned, my name is Sarah Mahmood. I'm a program manager at the Department of Homeland Security Science and Technology Directorate. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with S&T, we are essentially the R&D arm of uh, the entire Department of Homeland Security. So as you can imagine, our mission space is, is rather broad. Um, but within S&T, we have five visionary goals. Uh, one of those visionary goals is called Resilient Communities. Uh, and in this effort really focuses on uh, maintaining resilience throughout all hazards. So whether it's a natural disaster, man-made attack, we want to enable our communities to be more resilient since we're, the community at that community level is kind of like the uh, foundation or building blocks of our society. Uh, so communities, as you uh, are all members of, <laughs> uh, really rely on critical infrastructure. Uh, and so the gist of this uh, visionary goal is to actually enhance in the resilience of our critical infrastructure. So whether it's uh, electricity, uh, water, transportation, communications, we really want to enable our infrastructures to be more resilient, to be able to uh, withstand events uh, and bounce back faster after events occur. And so uh, one of the things that was already alluded to a little bit is how our critical infrastructures rely on and depend on GPS for timing uh, and uh, uh, all of the PNT, but especially for timing. Uh, and so most of these critical infrastructures, the GPS is, is really far embedded within the critical infrastructures. We don't even know all the places that we're using GPS. Uh, however, we do know that GPS is, is pretty much the prime source. Uh, and so when you talk about resiliency, if you have a single point like that, uh, it's not entirely resilient. Uh, and so we recognize and we are very supportive of this national need for a complementary PNT uh, capability. Uh, and, and by doing this, we will increase the resiliency of our critical infrastructure as well. Um, and so we know that there's a lot of new technologies, a lot of new options out there. Um, there is a multi-agency disciplinary process that's uh, currently in progress right now to evaluate uh, all, of, all of the progress that's been made in this space and to come up with uh, some recommendations on what uh, could possibly make sense for the nation and how we would want to proceed. Um, so this CRADA that you're going to hear about tonight uh, is a key uh, piece of this process and it's a wonderful opportunity for us to explore this candidate technology under an interesting uh, and also uh, under an interesting public-private sector relationship here uh, where we can leverage one another and hopefully come up with a technical solution uh, that is that would be promising for this problem. So we're really looking forward to over the next year testing the capability that's here um, and seeing what we can find out, being very open about, uh, about this effort, inviting folks to come participate, learn with us, uh, and see if we can put together something that can uh, uh, be a promising solution uh, in the days to come uh, as we look at the bigger picture and uh, focus on complementary PNT. Thank you. 